young man. He was 45 years old and he died of stomach cancer. The entire city of New York was in mourning and, and I was in a terribly foul mood. But my tutor, Arthur Cutler, knew that in the past, being outdoors and having strenuous exercise had not only restored my health but my spirits. He sent me that summer to the north woods of Maine, to the great Barustov country. And there along the Penobscot River, I hunted and hiked and canoed. We climbed Catawba, the highest point in Maine, famous today as the northern terminus of the great Appalachian Trail, a trail on which you may trot someday. Uh, on uh, that particular trip, uh, I returned to Harvard, uh, restored in my spirits, and returned to Harvard, threw myself into my studies, but as many a young man at that age as want to do, I fell in love with young Alice Hathaway Lee, the most beautiful girl in Boston. She but 16 years old at the time. And in the spring of my junior year in college, I proposed marriage to Alice, and she refused me. In the fall of my senior year, I proposed to Alice again, and she refused me again. Uh, but it's doggedness that does it. Persistence wins the prize. In the spring of my senior year, I proposed to Alice for the third time. She made me the happiest man in the world, agreeing to be my bride. Uh, now, I do understand uh, that occasionally, a married man has trouble remembering the date of his wedding anniversary. Uh, I took care of this. Alice and I were married on my birthday. <laughs> Very hard thing to forget your anniversary if it's on your birthday. Uh, we honeymooned but briefly. I knew that a man's first responsibility was to pull his own weight, to provide for his family. But I'd saw what our natural science as a profession, at least the way the profession was taught at Harvard those days. I enrolled in Columbia Law School, and soon became frustrated at Columbia Law School as well. For I discovered at law school, rather than teaching a lawyer to fight for righteousness and justice, at law school, a lawyer is taught to fight for a good outcome for his client, regardless of whether the outcome is truly righteous or just. And so it was when I was a young man there that I ran for the New York General Assembly. Uh, my family was greatly concerned, uh, for they said, Theodore, politics is not the business of a gentleman. It's the business of horse carriage drivers and saloon keepers. I said, if that's the nature of the governing class, I'd rather be a member of the governing class than be governed by men like those. I was elected to the New York General Assembly, its youngest member at the age of 43. One cousin, as I left for Albany, New York, to take the oath of office, his erroneous words were still ringing in my ears. He said, Theodore, don't you understand the Greek etymology of the word politics? Poly meaning many, and ticks being blood-sucking insects. <laughs> but off to Albany I went in any case. While I was a young member of the New York General Assembly, uh, I was uh, the man with the sun in his face. Happy in great part because life offers no greater reward than working hard at work worth doing. And happier still for the fact that Alice and I were expecting our first child. And happy was the day when the telegram came to the floor in Albany, announcing that Alice and I were the parents of a healthy baby girl. Congratulations were all about, even my political opponents were happy for me. But then a second and most ominous telegram came. That telegram sent me for the train, on the train down the Hudson Valley, racing to my family home in the middle of the night, where my brother Elliot greeted me at the door with these words. He said, there is a curse upon this house. Mother is dying, and your wife is too. On the morning of February 14th, St. Valentine's Day, 1884, when I was but a young man of 25, in the morning, my dear sweet widow mother, Martha Mitty Bullock Roosevelt, she died of typhoid fever. That afternoon, beneath the same roof and in my arms, my dear sweet bride Alice, she was 22 and a new mother, she died of Bright's disease, a kidney disease now quite treatable by modern medicine. There was nothing in my diary that day but a large black X. I later wrote that the light had gone out of my life forever. And a friend wrote of the twin funeral two days later, Theodore knows neither what he does nor says. But I was a man of faith. My faith told me my loved ones were not gone, but gone before. And I took courage from the words of my late father, who said, Dark care seldom sits behind the rider whose pace is swift enough. Get action. And action I got. I had the baby named Alice for her late mother, cared for by my sister Bammy. I returned to Albany, threw myself into the work of the General Assembly, returned to New York City, saw to family affairs, Took the train west to Chicago, participated in my first Republican National Convention. And then when the convention was over, I did not return east to New York City. I took the train west to a place where the Northern Pacific Railroad crosses the Little Missouri River 
the badlands of what was then the western Dakota Territory, today North Dakota. And there I became a cattle rancher. I'd gone the previous fall on a bison hunt, wanting to hunt a great bison or buffalo bull before the species would become extinct. And it was then that I decided to purchase cattle and to become a cattle rancher. Well, if you think those rough and tumble politicians of Albany, New York, thought me a strange fellow, and they did, imagine how the cowboys and ranchers of the Dakota Territory regarded me when I got off that Northern Pacific train. Uh, uh, my glasses were some sort of sign of a moral defect in a man's character. They called me Stormwinds and Forums. I was not of their kind. I had silver cowboy spurs, a silver cowboy belt buckle, and a silver hunting knife. Oh, jeweled at Tiffany's. Uh, but I had one distinct advantage. I was the cattle rancher. I owned the cattle. The cowboys worked for me. And I worked alongside the cowboys, earning their respect. And uh, perhaps there's another time when I can return and tell you stories about those wonderful times of being a young man living in what was still the Wild West, the Indian, the soldier, the cow puncher, uh, the fur trapper, uh, a Wild West so well represented uh, in the pictures of Frederick Remington and in the stories uh, of, uh, of so many other Western writers. Uh, well, I'm fast forwarding through history 